about it this morning. This is the final week today, in fact, to bring in your shoeboxes uh, for the shoebox ministry. There is a second collection today that is going to be taken up for relief efforts in the Philippines. Your support is greatly needed. Next Sunday begins an Advent series on Pope Francis and Vatican II. Join us in the chapel at 1125 each Sunday of Advent. 2014 church calendars are now available at the front and side entrances to church. Skylar Outreach is in need of your help. They anticipate distributing between three to 400 turkeys for Thanksgiving but they only have 100 so far. If you can donate a turkey, a Cornish hen, or a roasting chicken, please contact Jesse or Nancy at Skylar Outreach. Mass on Thanksgiving Day is 8.30 a.m. at St. Mary's. There's a custom here at the Skylar Catholic Community. At the end of the final hymn, we all kneel, sign and sing three Hail Marys for the next one among us called Home by God. We ask you now to please check your cell phone and make sure it is silent. Our opening hymn will be number 498 in the gathered hymnal. I'm sorry, 488. <laughs> Today's readings can be found on page 144 in the Sunday's Word Missalette. Please join us now in our call to worship. <coughs>
grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ the King be with you all. As we gather in this great solemnity of Jesus our Lord and King, may we turn to him seeking his healing, his mercy, and his peace. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only God the Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things, in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant we pray that the whole of creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. <coughs> Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I should be seated as I invite my young friends forward with the liturgy of the Word. How are you this morning? Good, that's awesome. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Look at all these wonderful. Boys and girls, we have. Does anybody know what next Sunday is? What is it? First Sunday of Advent already. Wow. So the end of the church here kind of tells us what it was like for Jesus at one point in his life and what it could be like for us. So I pray that Almighty God will give you his spirit to open your ears, minds, and hearts, and the ears, minds, and hearts of all of us to hear his word and to live it in our lives. So may God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come on over. All right, we'll see you guys later. <coughs> A reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel, and she shall be the commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them, there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A response on this song is hymn number 120. Let us go to join him. It's number 120. <laughs>
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself must be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross, through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Well, next week is the first Sunday of Advent, and it will be two years next week that the church promulgated the new translation of the Roman Missal. Some people were looking forward to the new translation. There are others that received it with some hesitancy, waiting to see and, and, and to feel it out, as it were. And there are others that completely rejected it. They still say the prayers uh, before, from before the translation. It's interesting, every once in a while, as, as I make the, uh, the proclamation, the Lord be with you, and, and I hear back, and with your spirit, there are times I hear wakings through the midst of that, and also with you. <laughs> it's like, okay. 
but um, it's been two years, so I think we t it's time to take another step. Um, somebody had donated the money so that we can make these prayer cards. It's kind of interesting, last night after St. Benedict's Mass at 5 o'clock, um, somebody came up and said, Father, you were talking about the prayer cards in your pews. I just wanted to let you know what, uh, what happened in our home parish. Uh, the priest did not put out any kind of worship aid. He said, ah, you'll pick it up as you go. So it's like, wow, that would have been hard for me. I don't know if I could have done that. But, you know, these are two years old. We've used up the last of the good ones. So it's time to move on from these. So um, just before Christmas, we're going to do a cleaning of the church. And these are going to go. If you want to take them with you, you're welcome to. But you're going to have to make sure that you bring them back and forth. Because if there's any that are found in the pews, they'll just keep on getting recycled. So if you want to make these your own, you're welcome to do that. We're not leaving you abandoned, though. In the Sunday's Word, Miss Lens, on the inside front cover and inside back cover, are the translations of most of the prayers. So, um, you know, you have something that's right here available right in front of you. So if you're saying, we, I really don't know all the new words yet, I'm not sure the new translation, if you pick up the Sunday's Word on the inside front and back covers, they're available there. Up in St. Benedict's, we don't have the Sunday's Word. We have a different version of the Gather Hymnal. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put some inserts uh, inside the Gather Hymnal up at St. Benedict's. So you can either take the cards with you and make them yours and bring them back and forth to Mass, or you can use the Sunday's Word inside front and back cover, or at St. Benedict's, use the insert. Another option is um, Daily Missal, Daily Roman Missal. Um, it's got all the readings uh, for all the Masses of the year, and it's got all the prayers in there with the new translation. If you're old enough, like me, to remember the old St. Joseph Sunday Missal and Daily Missal, this is basically the same thing, but it's all in one. There's no daily in, in Sunday version. This is everything in one. I got mine at the Abbey of the Genesee in Pafard, uh, just outside Geneseo. Um, you can get them online. Um, the Catholic store in Ithaca, right near Immaculate Conception Church, you can get them through there. So if you decide you want to use uh, a daily or Sunday resource, you can get the Daily Roman Missal. It's kind of interesting, though, to reflect back on the change. Um, what I got thinking of as I was praying about the words and, and how people respond to them, there's an old assessment tool. It's called word association. You know, somebody says a word, and then the person says the first word that comes to their mind from that. So like, for example, if I say dog, somebody might say cat, you know? If I say cat, somebody might say evil. Oh, it depends on my cat's name, you know? But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's your perception. It's where you're coming from. So, you know, when you hear a word, it goes through your filters. And it's how you perceive it. And it's what you do with it. Jesus Christ is king. And this Sunday is dedicated to him as king. Now, it's not a word we use a lot in the English language. Even though we do pray it every Sunday in the Gloria, you know, Lord God, Heavenly King, it's there. But, you know, usually it just skates by us. We, we really don't grab onto it and hold it. So this one time of year, this feast, the solemnity of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King, is a time when we focus on what it means that Jesus is King. And how do we respond to that? When you hear that Jesus Christ is king, what does that evoke in you? What is your perception of him as king? If he is a king, it means we're his subjects. Are we willing to subject ourselves to Jesus, to his will, his desires, his example? In the first reading today, we hear about David who is going to end up being king, but it's being foretold that he's going to be a commander and a shepherd. And of course, Jesus is our good shepherd. We have Good Shepherd Sunday. We have the readings that talk about Jesus as a shepherd. But if we call him our shepherd, it means that we are willing to be his sheep. 
that we are willing to be led and guided by Him, even if it seems to places where we don't want to go. So how do we react? What is our perception of Jesus as our good shepherd? And if Jesus is a king, it means that there is a kingdom. Of course, we know that. Because every time we say the prayer that he taught, we say to the Father, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. But what kind of a kingdom is it? Again, when you hear that word, kingdom, what do you associate with that? What kind of a kingdom do you envision? In the preface, which will be prayed in a few moments, we talk about, we pray about how Jesus might present to the immensity of the Father's majesty an eternal and universal kingdom. A kingdom of truth. A kingdom of life. A kingdom of holiness. And a kingdom of grace. A kingdom of justice. A kingdom of love. A kingdom of peace. Is that the kind of kingdom you would envision? And even when you hear those words, truth, life, holiness, grace, justice, love, and peace, what is evoked in you? What, are, what is your perception of what justice is, or holiness is, or peace? Jesus is our leader. But how do we react to having a leader? You know, in the church, we've been very aware of this over the last year. You know, with the retirement of Pope Benedict XVI and uh, the elevation of uh, Cardinal Bergoglio to the papacy, Cardinal Francis. You know, it's interesting. There are some people that really love Pope Francis. You know, they love what he's written in the past. They love what he's saying now. They love his example. And there are people that are not so fond of him. It all goes back to perception. A few weeks ago, um, after a meeting, a lady was talking about, you know, the church and the direction of the church, and she said, is Pope Francis as liberal and progressive as he seems? And so I asked her, I said, what has he said or what has he done that would make you say he's progressive and liberal? And she listed ten things. And so I went through the list of the ten things with her, one by one, and all ten of those things were either A, based in Scripture, or B, a long-standing tradition in the church. Nothing new. Nothing progressive about it. Nothing liberal. It's something that is old, either centuries old in Scripture, or hundreds of years old in church tradition and teaching. But it was the way she perceived it. Now, maybe Pope Francis is presenting it in a very new way, but what he's saying and doing isn't new. It all rests with the perception. And here in the Diocese of Rochester, we're, again, aware of leadership. You know, Bishop Clark's retirement and just the recent selection of uh, Bishop Matano as our, our new bishop. And it's interesting to see how people react to that. People are already talking about him. He's this, he's that, you know. He's conservative, he's traditionally. So my response is, I just asked them, oh, when did you meet him? Oh, I've never met him. Oh, but you know this about him. Well, you know this paper said or this. Well, that's the paper's perception, or that's that other person's perception. What is your perception? You've never met the man. But again, we get this reaction within us. Basically, we're all setting ourselves up as kings and queens, we end up making the final decision. We decide if we're going to lead. We decide if we're going to follow. And if we're going to follow who we're following. I love this story. Um, it's very humorous for me, and, but it's very telling. A couple years ago, a conversation with a gentleman, and he was talking about his mother. And over the years, his mother would always say, when it came to religion or, or, or faith or spirituality, well, you know, the Pope says you have to do this. The Pope says you have to do that. So anytime there was a question about something, 
her response was, the Pope says you have to do this. The Pope says you have to do that. Mm. Well, there was a, a, a new teaching of the church that came out. And so when he was telling his mom, Mom, look, we don't have to do it that way anymore. We can do this. Who says so? Mm. Well, the Pope did. Well, the Pope's wrong. <laughs> Yeah, so the Pope says this, the Pope says that, unless I don't like it, and then the Pope's wrong. <laughs> we set ourselves up as the kings and queens. We're in charge. We make choices. We make decisions. But who do we follow? When do we follow? I'm not going to follow you. <laughs> You're going to follow me. You're being silly now. We decide who we're going to follow. So, with Advent, just around the corner, and this being the Feast of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. It's a good time to just stop and think and reflect. Is Jesus my King? Is He my Shepherd? Do I want to follow Him? Me. And will I? Maybe. Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful 
departed, whose lifelong vigil for the Lord has ended, especially Margaret Ryan, Elmo James, John Crotty, that they will share in the joy of the eternal banquet. And for all parishioners and for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, our prayer. For the intention spoken in our hearts, They will be heard and granted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, our shepherd and our king, we turn to you in our need. Inspire us by your spirit to follow your example of truth, justice, peace, and love. That our lives will build your kingdom where you live and reign as our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our hymn for the presentation is number 816.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross, as his spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and making all created things subject to his rule. He might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we now acclaim. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Behold, he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to but only say the word, my soul shall be
having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glory in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. It's been a uh, custom in the parish for several years now that we do the uh, Operation Shoebox uh, Children's Christmas Ministry. If you haven't looked at the back shelf of church on the courtyard side, before you leave, like, take a look at the generosity of so many people to make sure that children who, will, or who are in need will have a good Christmas. So may we bow our heads and ask God's blessing. Lord, we thank you for the generous hearts which have responded so graciously to the needs of children throughout our area and throughout the world. May you bless these shoeboxes, those who filled them, those who handle them, and those who receive them. Provide them with the prayers of the saints and the protection of the angels, blessing them and blessing these shoeboxes through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel with your life. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 791, Lift High the Cross, number 791.